now that the Steam Deck OLED is here, all of these rumors about mystery Valve hardware basically just go right out the window. You may remember back in September, there were articles like new mystery Valve hardware device certified in South Korea. This had radio certification. So it was a device that had wireless capabilities, which is not a great rumor because that's literally every device in Valve's product stack. So because people didn't know what it all was, the rumors basically just ran wild. Maybe it's a new VR headset, the mythical Deckard that's supposed to come out at some point in the future, maybe. Maybe it's a new Steam controller. That would be nice, like, they've sort of done a lot of the controller work here, so maybe they could make something new there. Or maybe some people even thought it was going to be a Steam Deck 2. I don't know how those people thought it was going to be a Steam Deck 2. And in the passing days since the announcement of the Steam Deck OLED, I've realized something. In retrospect, the idea of a Steam Deck revision that makes use of an HDR screen was really, really obvious, and the clues were there every single step of the way, but nobody pieced it together. There was absolutely zero chance it was going to be a Steam Deck 2. If you paid any attention whatsoever to what people from Valve have been saying, that has been pretty obvious. So in a recent email to The Verge, Valve said, don't expect a faster Steam Deck in the next couple of years. And here is the full quote. It's important to us that the deck offers a fixed performance target for developers, and the message to customers is simple, where every deck can play the same games. As such, changing the performance level is not something we are taking lightly, and we only want to do so when there is a significant enough increase to be had. We also don't want more performance to come at a significant cost to power efficiency and battery life. I don't anticipate such a leap for you possible in the next couple of years, but we're still closely monitoring innovations in architectures and fabrication processes to see where things are going there. And whilst no one from Valve has explicitly said it, the author extrapolates this to mean, okay, maybe we'll see a Steam Deck 2 in 2025, 2026. That would be about like four or five years after the initial release of the Steam Deck. And I think by that point, it's probably fair to say that, yeah, we might start hearing some more rumors about an actual Steam Deck 2. I doubt at this stage there's really any big enough performance improvement to really justify doing it, but I would highly doubt that the device is not at least in its very early planning stages. But with the OLED, we did also get a fairly minor processor upgrade, moving from the 7 nanometer Aerith APU to the 6 nanometer Sephiroth APU, which obviously set a lot of the gaming outlets wild, like, oh my god, they added another Final Fantasy VII reference! Yeah, of course they were going to. Why would you name the processor Aerith if you're not going to just keep going down that line? A lot of the rumors were referring to it as Galileo slash Sephiroth, Sephiroth being the APU, and Galileo being the name of the update stream used for the Steam Deck OLED. When it's available for the consumer, it's going to be a part of the regular update stream. But all of that is just side content that other people can talk about. The HDR is the thing that I should have realized what was happening because I have been following the updates to HDR on Linux since it was first being made public. So all the way back in January, you may remember this. New Linux gaming milestone. With the latest work from Josh Ashton, HDR can now be enabled for real games. Tested it tonight on my AMD desktop with Halo Infinite, Deep Rock Galactic, Death Stranding DC, very early, and will still need some time to bake to be useful to most. But it was there, and it was actually usable. In a sense. At the time, it was very rudimentary. You needed some custom game scope patches, some custom DXVK patches, you needed some custom kernel patches. This was working, but it was not at all ready for the consumer. The average Linux gamer, especially installing kernel patches, is not going to be doing that. Like, this was still quite a while away. And if you are following the Linux news, or maybe Joshua Ashton's socials, you may have seen posts like this one. Here is Death Stranding DC running with HDR on Linux. 
It's hard to show off HDR, so have an HDR heat map to go along with it. Anything not grayscale is brighter than 100 nits. So this basically just demonstrates how bright each section of the image are, because obviously you can't show HDR on a non-HDR screen. This is just like a representation. So it was clearly functioning, and there were certain parts like uh, this random railing, which got really, really bright. And then we jump way ahead to two months ago, and now we have Elden Ring HDR on Linux. Had to implement the legacy and terrible NVRP HDR interfaces and pretend my AMD GPU was NVIDIA. Check it out. Now this is kind of a horrible location to demonstrate it because it's a really dark area, but you can see as he is hitting the wall, that area is getting really, really bright. You know what? I changed my mind. Maybe it's actually a good area because in this place, there is very limited bright things, so it's a lot easier to see what parts are getting really, really bright, as opposed to Death Stranding, where the entire sky is bright. So you can clearly see by this point, HDR gaming on Linux was coming along fairly well. So well, in fact, that in the 3.5 update to SteamOS, there were some really interesting features available. Now, there were a ton of changes, things like improvements to default color rendering, things like new display color settings. Also, HDR can now be enabled in display settings if supported by the external display. This is still specifically in a gaming context. So if you're gaming on an external screen in the gaming mode, you can now make use of your HDR functionality. But this, this is a really, really good cover because by September, they know they're making the Steam Deck OLED and they probably know exactly when it is coming out. So they made it very clear that this is not for use on the Steam Deck, it's for use on a display connected to the Steam Deck. Don't worry guys, we're not doing an HDR Steam Deck. Now this guy here, Jeremy Salan, also works with Valve. He says, the real mystery of the Steam Deck OLED is how did Joshi, which is Joshua Ashton, Melissa, and I get away with adding Linux HDR support to a public code base without raising suspicions. So Joshua not only has been writing code, he has been doing public talks at places like XDC about HDR coming along. Like, this is not a secret that HDR was happening. I personally also have just a tiny little bit of private knowledge. So I've been trying to arrange for Joshua Ashton to come onto the podcast. At the start of the year or end of last year, he was busy with real life things. Totally fair, totally understandable. I sent him another message about a week before the Steam Deck OLED was announced. I hadn't received my unit then. I had no idea it was happening. He replied by saying, you just got me at the worst possible time again. No other context, no information about like why it's the worst possible time, but knowing now that one of the main things that he works on is going to be a part of a major new Valve product, it kind of makes sense why now was the worst time possible. But for me, this is the best part. I've not just done one video on Linux HDR this year. I've probably done at least two or three, along with talking about it on my podcast, because there are things happening outside of Valve as well. So you may remember back in April, the Shell and Display Next Hackfest, which you may know better as the Red Hat HDR Hackfest. And let's look at the possible attendees, because we're going to notice a couple of familiar names. Wow, it's Josh Ashton. Oh, Pierre from Valve is there as well. Oh, look, another Valve developer. Crazy. Imagine that. But there is another party involved here that I do want to mention. That being Melissa Wen from Agalia. Whilst not much hacking occurred at this event, this event was absolutely massive for bringing HDR support to Linux. This event is a very big part of the reason why in Plasma 6, there is going to be support for HDR compatible games. If you want to see a write-up about this from the time, Xaver has an incredibly good one. It goes very deep into how HDR works and color management and all of the things that need to be done, but the point is that this event was incredibly important. But there is another name not from Valve that is very connected to what is happening on the Steam Deck, that being Melissa Wen from Igalia. Igalia is an open source consultancy and developer firm, and Melissa has been doing quite a bit of work alongside Valve. In places, 
that are very public. For example, the Linux kernel, which she, alongside Joshua Ashton, made a giant patch set back in April about HDR and color management. And much like Joshua, who's doing public talks about HDR and color management, Melissa is writing public blog posts about HDR and color management. Multiple parts for the same topic. AMD driver-specific properties for color management on Linux. All of this work and a ton more comes together to bring HDR support to the new Steam Deck OLED. In my original Steam Deck video, I did make a slight mistake that Joshua sent me a correction on. We are using our own kernel APIs in SteamOS for HDR with Shaper plus 3D LUTs, and everything is done at scanout. HDR comes at zero cost from the game to the display. The only thing that uses slightly more power when doing is the extra brightness, which is in the milliwatt range, and barely any real-world impact given the high-end brightness is mostly for highlights. So TLDR, HDR on deck OLED has zero cost performance and near zero cost to battery life. Now we could have just said that all of this work was going to be for supporting external displays. That was the official narrative and it would make sense. Or maybe we're doing all this work for the external displays now and then eventually in a couple of years with a Steam Deck 2, that is going to have an HDR screen. That would also be a perfectly reasonable argument. But knowing everything we know now, knowing the Steam Deck OLED exists with an HDR screen, it makes a lot of sense that we got a Steam Deck revision. Honestly, I feel really, really dumb for not noticing that it was going to happen. I'm sure somebody out there had a theory that maybe we were getting that, but it certainly wasn't the popular thing. So let me know. Maybe you were one of those people that had a theory, or maybe you had a completely different theory that you want to share instead. I would love to hear it. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And if you liked the video, go like the video. And if you really liked the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, Scribes, and Verapay linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me, and I'm going to go play some video games.